hello we're just gonna get straight into it today because this will be a very short stream but a kind of long video uh to explain some stuff about vtube studio that i've always wanted to talk about uh so if you're a live studio rigger like me um you might not think a lot about how uh you know you finished all the live 3d stuff like yeah maybe there's like a little bit of more stuff you need to do like animation or whatever but maybe you haven't thought about it so we're gonna go in order from the stuff that i think most people are already doing to the stuff that's like super esoteric maybe even if you're a really experienced live city rigger you've probably never heard of it um so for this example we're gonna be using this model i have that is already a model i use but it's straight off the straight off the the line right out of life to be um blink twice if this is pre-recorded it's not pre-recorded mm, it's not pre-recorded it's not pre-recorded <laughs> i'm just that good <laughs> so this is a this is a life to model that is just completely you know, I haven't done anything with. So this is the auto setup, obviously. And so I don't know what other Let's City Riggers do, but the first thing that I do when I have a new model in here is I go to the model information tab, which is the person with the gear on the top, and I change the name. I change the name so that this is the name and the icon that will show up in the list of models here. And then I also take a picture for the icon. There you go. Save. Good stuff. Or maybe Nuos was just paid to make that question. No, no, no. See, I'm reading all of your comments. So I immediately go into the screenshots folder, which is in your pictures folder slash screenshots. I rename it as icon. And you guys can't see this, but I'm just, all I'm doing is I'm cropping it to be square. Save. And then I bring it into the folder, the model folder for this. Which is called, I named it, what is it? Test Chibi. Yeah, here we go. And you can just throw that in there. And once you click on this, you'll now have that. So now you see that this icon will show up in your list of, uh, you know, models. Nice smug expression. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't calibrated this one much, which we're not gonna go into that. I'm not gonna be talking about all of the things, you know, calibrating these specific um, uh, numbers, um, but you should be doing that. Um, personally, by the way, I only ever change the in values because the out values are the parameters. So you, there's very few instances in which you wanna change the out values of, the, of a of a tracking parameter you pretty much only ever want to change the in uh one of the most common is just going to mouth open and changing it to point one at least i change it to point one which is kind of overkill but mm, that's how i like to do it so personally this is 100 percent personal preference i turn off movement config bothers me a little bit i know like i it's perfectly valid to like it but I, i'm not a huge fan um so Obviously, like, this is something probably everyone does. What I'm really hoping everyone does is setting up the expressions for their client. So, for instance, let's say this one was sad. Um, I would just go in here, change all of the stuff. Let's say, is there a... Maybe, like, sad little eyebrows. You can type in the value. We're still on the stuff that everyone's already doing, okay? We're still on the stuff that everyone's already doing. We're gonna get there. There you go. So then we got a sad expression. You can add it to the hotkey. Something you might not think about. Something you might not have thought about. You can change the, the transition time for every hotkey. So some hotkeys you might wanna happen basically instantaneously. Um, now usually I handle this on the rigging side for the most part, but you can also handle it here. Although I think the smallest amount you can do is 0.01 which is not actually as fast as you might want it to be, especially if you have just like fading between two different value parameters. Your mouth flap sync is really good. Do you add any audio delay to make that happen or is it just all the tech caught up to processing it faster? Uh, I mean, the, the lip syncing is just happening by my iPhone tracking my mouth. So 
It's not like it's not like it's doing with the audio. It's just doing with my physical mouth. Mouth. <laughs> so yes, maybe people usually don't mess with the fade, but maybe you do. Maybe you want to make it really long. Maybe you want to make it really short. You know, that's something to think about. Here's something people may not think about is the physics. So to be honest, I'm very um, guilty of this. I actually almost always keep this on ma match app FPS, which I really shouldn't. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to change the FPS to um, the FPS you use in Live CD. However, personally on my computer, I think it's a GPU problem that I have. If I do anything that's not match app FPS, I get these really weird physics bugs like constantly. So on my computer, I have to use match app FPS, but for commissions, I should really be setting this to whatever's happening in, in Live City so it actually matches what I rigged. Um, but generally speaking, what I end up doing is just like changing the physics strength. Um, you may not know that each of these values here has a little gear. And this allows you to actually, usually this is something that the client would want to do because their client is on the client side. They're using match app, app FPS and it's reacting weirdly. Um, you can make it so that some so each physics parameter, each physics setting um, has a different weight. So you can actually increase the weight or decrease the weight. Um, let's see, let's 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 change like bangs middle. See, well yeah, that that didn't ha that wasn't very obvious. <laughs> let's something this to be super obvious. Hair back, bangs bounce middle. That's a little bit more obvious. You can also turn it off. Increase it, turn it off. You can't, it's hard to tell with those because of the way I have it set up, but Live City really made physics match the FPS unlike Unity's separate physics thread. Yeah, it's a very, very weird Live City thing. I hate it desperately. Live City's physics is honestly hella jank. Um, they also have this weird bug where it'll get like, the pendulum will get like stuck on zero. It's super, super weird. Doesn't matter. So this is this is just to, to control the entire physics strength of that physics group. But something you might not have thought of is wind strength. So a really, I do this with all of my models. I turn wind strength up to the complete 100. And you can tell that my whole body right now is like flying around because I have head and body physics mapping to physics and there's a ton of physics settings that you're gonna want to just completely turn off for wind because it's just completely irrelevant eye physics irrelevant arms probably irrelevant um hair you're probably good ears are probably fine chest you might want to turn off unless you want some some wacky chest physics um, pupils, I definitely want to turn off. Tongue, I definitely want to turn off. So, there you go. So now the phys now the wind physics is only affecting the things that it would actually affect. Um, oh, here's this one's fun. This is this is a fairly comparatively new feature in uh, VTube Studio called dragging physics, and this refers to when you drag your model left and right on the screen. It doesn't work up and down. It's just left and right. So obviously, uh. It's doing some crazy stuff. So you can actually reverse the physics too. So you have to actually manually type in zero, which is a little bit annoying if you want to zero it out. But this is gonna be basically almost exactly the same as whatever settings you have for wind. But wacky waving arms. Yeah. Oops. Zero, zero, zero. Um, probably don't want to have arms, but you know, wacky wave waving inflatable arms man. Uh, and like I said, it only affects X, so you might want to zero out the Y stuff too, because it is it does only work for dragging left and right. But that's just you know here neither here nor there. Pupils and tongue. There you go. So now when I drag myself left and right, it does more what I'm expecting it to do, <laughs> rather than just flinging my whole body everywhere um and actually it might be fun to just turn that on for the client by default like have it you know something kind of low something a little bit less noticeable um but that's 100 personal preference they won't think to turn it on 
to be honest. So um, if you just like turn it on a little bit, maybe like 30, 35, um, that tends to be kind of nice. Something they probably won't even notice, quite frankly, but I notice. I notice. So more stuff on this uh, model custom is on this model pane here. Um, this one, usually you only have to do it if it's noticeable. Um, this fix white lines thing. So sometimes when you have a model and you zoom out, it doesn't happen on this model. But sometimes if you have a model, you'll see white lines, especially if you have like a lot of black art meshes next to each other or like mask stuff. Um, you're going to want to click this. Honestly, it doesn't hurt to, to click it anyways. Um, it just basically changes the texture atlas just a little bit and um, widens all of the color, the, the color uh, of the art meshes so that it doesn't create that white outline when you zoom out a lot. So it doesn't hurt to do that. Here is the section where we're getting into the stuff that I don't know how many Live City T Riggers know or do this, um, but this is one of my favorite, most underutilized things in VTube Studio, is the customized model panel. So the biggest one is the exclude art mesh from item pinning, but we're gonna ignore that for right now. First, we're gonna do the customized scene lighting for art meshes. Now, for reasons I don't really understand, um, when you turn that on, it doesn't show you what it would look like. So you have to, before you start doing that, you have to um, go to, where is it? It's the camera one. You have to actually turn on the lighting stuff. So just turn it on to anything so that you can clearly see the lighting. And then go to customize model. Um, customized scene lighting for art meshes and now um, especially if you have things that glow this is a this is a this is absolutely necessary so you'll see I actually do have some glowing things here so I want to turn off I want to turn off that um, effect from yeah sorry from from the lighting could you program some kinematics to uh, detect how much you drag horizontally so the legs automatically follow at the rate of pull in that direction? Wow, that sounds like so much extra work for no reason. I don't know why this is called Armish 10. I'm a hack. I'm a hack. Oops. But yeah, so I usually do like I. A lot of the times people will like turn off it for the eyes so that the eyes are glowing, but I like to turn it at least off for the eye highlights because otherwise that kind of seems weird to me. Um, but in this model, that's pretty much it for stuff for stuff I would turn off for um, for the scene lighting. However, actually, for if if nothing else in the eye is um, is glowing, I might turn the the highlights to like half. But it just seems weird to have it like fully on for me. So then, yeah, we're done with that. So we can turn off. Oh, I always go to the wrong one. We can turn off the display lighting. And this is, this next one is my absolute bread and butter. This is my, this is to me so important. And I, I have no idea how many people are doing this. So we go to customize model and we say exclude art mesh from item pinning. What this is, is it saying, hey, don't, when, when you, when someone pins an item to their model, completely ignore the movement of this art mesh. So for me, I turn this off for the lips, like pretty much anything that's labeled mouth. Oops. I'll turn this off for all the mouth stuff because I mean, there is reasons. Like, I guess if you had like a mustache or something and you wanted to move it with the top lip, but like for the most part, even if that was the true, I would only turn it on for the skin. Um, I turn it off. Why did I click? Okay. Let's see. I turn it off for eyebrows. I sometimes, sometimes this might be controversial and I, I go back and forth on this. I turn it off for all of the bangs because the thing is nine times out of 10, when someone's trying to pin something to their face, they're not trying to put it on their hair. They're trying to put it on their face. So I, I do go back and forth on like whether to turn it off for the for the bangs or the fringe 
um, or not, that will be up to you. Maybe you want to ask the client that. Definitely turn it off for the shadows. Um, head ribbon, okay. I turn it off for all of the eyes. I, I have a hard time thinking of reasons why you would want to pin stuff to your eyelashes. I guess it could happen. But, oh yeah, anything inside the mouth, I definitely turn it off. I turn it off for the blushing. We're going to talk about that in a second. I don't turn it off for the nose because I can see a lot of reasons why you would want to pin stuff on your nose. But, well, it depends. It kind of depends on how much the actual nose art mesh moves from the face mesh. But we'll talk about that in a second. Because I actually rig my face mesh with item pinning in mind. And that's extremely crucial. So I'm going to just turn off, turn off head shading. Do not turn off ba the, the base color of the head. That is like the most important one to have on. If, if I have nothing else turned on for item pinning, I have that one turned on. So generally speaking on the body, I turn, I keep most things on unless it's like some sort of weird thing that I don't know why you would want to have it on. Glows off. Um... I think that's pretty much it on this model. Oh yeah, this eye thing clearly is still here. Oops. Let me just go through this really quick. Like I said, I turn it off for all the eyes. I see a glow, let's turn off for the glow. Glowing or shining or whatever, turn it off. Turn it off for all the eyes. Shadows off, masks off. Like literally just search for mask and just turn it off. Shadow, oops, off. Uh, lots of eye stuff I want to turn off. Again, this, this is kind of my personal preference, but just based on how I use my model and how I've seen people use their models, this is what I, what I think it would work for most people. Turning it off for all the eyes. That's tongue. Yeah, turn it off for tongue. And fang headline okay hairline turn it off that's like the hair underneath the bangs you can't even see it i think that's everything belt middle uh yeah because the thing is even if you turn it on off even if you turn off it, it off for an art mesh it'll still pin to what's ever underneath it so you don't have to worry about like, oh, they'll never be able to pin anything like here. They, they still can, but it'll just pin it. It'll, it'll follow their heads art mesh. So here's the crux of this. Let's go to Life City real quick. Here's the crux of this. This is so important too. I think probably people are already doing this, but they're maybe not using it in conjunction with the exclude item pinning setting. With the way that item pinning works, if when you put an item on a model, it will find the location relative to the art mesh triangle and put itself there. So if you don't rig your face to move with the contours of the face, then anything they pin onto their head or their face won't move with their head correctly. So I, I go to extra lengths to make sure that for my head color or base head or whatever you want to call it, I add these detailed triangles and take the time to specifically rig them for the head angles so that it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect, but the better, the better, the better. <laughs> um, usually I use the nose as like a tracking point. More, are more triangles better? Um, I mean, honestly, at a certain point, it doesn't really matter. Like, um... Technically speaking, yes, more triangles would be more precise, but for item pinning, this is probably good enough. This is usually what I do. I do like two stripes up the head, maybe one more, but usually I just do these these two lines up the head with the one in the middle. Um, and then I use the nose and the eyes and the mouth as like reference points for where these points should be. So you'll see on the eyes, it like follows the eyes. Because if I didn't do this, here, I'll if I didn't specifically do this, you see how it doesn't follow the head at all? And that's how you get stuff where people put a mustache on their face and it just like flies around, right? So that's why. That's why that's happening. 
Um, and I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Like I said, this is a really, really quick stream, quote unquote stream. Uh, mostly I just wanted to record this as like a tutorial video for people to watch in the future. So um, if any lefty riggers see this and you think of anything I didn't cover or you disagree with me or you have a question, put it down in the comments. Uh, thank you all to all the people who were here live. Um, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Bye.